Uh, I'm Colin Todd, Managing Director of CS Todd and Associates and I chair the Fire Risk Assessment Council of the Fire Industry Association. Since 2006, the Fire Risk Assessment has been the foundation for fire safety in virtually all non-domestic premises. Uh, prior to that, the Fire and Rescue Service came along and issued fire certificates for many of the common places of work and effectively acted as free consultants. All that has changed, so the real foundation for a safe building is the fire risk assessment. Uh, I'm Ben Bradford, I'm the founder of BB7. We're a fire uh, risk and resilience consultancy. A fire risk assessment is required by law and it must be suitable and sufficient. Um, but from an organisation's or a business perspective, businesses uh, have got their customers to think about, their clients, they've got their staff. Clearly there's a, a life safety concern. A risk assessment is basically a structured look at the premises and their fire risk. If we think of risk as having two components, likelihood of fire and consequences of fire, Having dealt with the likelihood of fire by addressing the, the fire hazards, the things that can cause fire, the risk assessor would then look at the measures to keep people safe uh, if fire does occur. And these are measures such as means of escape, emergency lighting, fire alarm systems, fire extinguishers and so on. And, and an important part of a fire risk assessment is also to look at the standard of fire safety management. So the fire risk assessor would look at fire procedures, staff training, fire drills, arrangements for maintenance and testing, then the duty holders should be carrying out their own routine lower level inspections and confirmation of that would be part of the, the fire risk assessment. My name's um, Steve Michael, I work for BB7 Fire Consultants. Uh, risk assessment needs to be carried out by a competent person. The idea that a competent person is either someone competent within the the organisation carrying out the fire risk assessment, or it could be a third party consultant. Our company was the first in the UK to have gained uh, third party certification uh, from, a, from a company perspective and therefore all of our fire risk assessors have been shadowed out on site, undertaken a four and a half hour exam and undertaken test of competency via a warrant and certification and the FRAX scheme. The importance of using uh, third party certificated companies is really in that there's a, cost of, there's a cost of competence but there's a cost of incompetence and if an organisation makes the mistake of appointing incompetent fire risk assessors they may find themselves spending more on fire safety than they necessarily need to, uh, maybe because the uh, fire risk assessors are overly cautious and don't fully understand risk and as a result they uh, specify more uh, fire precautions than, than that is necessary. But what is more worrying is, it, is what that fire risk assessor has missed. They may well be over specifying some fire safety precautions but they might have missed a hazard or something that's got the potential to cause harm that's really serious and that's the more worrying point. When we start the fire risk assessment process um, we tend to uh, start by the interview of the management and work out the context of the organisation and the nature of the hazards that organisation is, is facing. I think when I first walk into the building, I just want to get a general feel for the building itself. So to get an idea of where the, where the escapes are, um, the type of strategy that building has for means of escape, do they all evacuate in simultaneously? Is there a special sequence that they have to follow for evacuation? Um, is there any sleeping risk? Is it a building where people are familiar with the building? And it's just getting those sort of things in, in first and then looking more specifically at components within the building. If, if the fire risk assessment is found by the enforcing authority not to be adequate, uh, they may simply have uh, a, a letter from the fire authority explaining that. Um, if it is very inadequate and there are quite a few problems in fire safety, they may be served with an enforcement notice. Uh, ultimately, particularly where there are other serious deficiencies, they may be open to prosecution for failure to carry out a, a proper fire risk assessment. And of course, because fire risk assessment is the foundation for fire safety in all non-domestic premises, there is exposure of people to risk if fire risk assessments are not carried out properly. 
The main compliance drivers for fire risk management is life safety and the legislation is life safety focused but there are plenty of other compliance drivers for organisations such as uh, property protection, business continuity or even environmental considerations. Fire cost business uh, thousands upon thousands each year in downtime. There's also the environmental impact uh, of fire as well which businesses need to concern and a fire risk assessment can really uh, afford an organisation the opportunity of identifying the hazards that it's faced with and uh, improving the risk mitigation.